Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Tact OP Destiny episode number 6. Right, the previous episode, um, we met a few characters, a few new characters. Um, first of all, two music arts. Uh, we met Hell and Valkyrie. And then there was this um, conductor whose name I don't remember. And he is the conductor of Hell. And we see how the conductor was actually trying to, I don't know, do something to Tuck and um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Destiny. And by the end of it, when he was able to see Tuck's actual power, he, I don't know, like he, he thought of something else. At the first, at the beginning, he thought about, I don't know, like disposing them off or something or like something along that line. But then, like, you know, with all the fight, fighting happening, we, he sees Tuck's power, and then he actually offers him to join him. <laughs> Tuck says that, no, I'm not interested, because, yeah, like, because everything, like, all that Tuck's interested in is in music. So, <laughs> he gets mad, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to catch you, and I'm going to, like, you know, make you regret it, all that stuff. And Hell seems like an interesting character. Um, it's basically, she's like, uh... I don't know, like a person if personification of chaos or something like that. Like you know, like she likes fighting and like you know these type of stuff. While Valkyrie is very straightforward, she wants the like right thing. She wants the right thing to happen. She is more um, focused on justice. So in the end, we see how the conductor, he says that, yeah, we don't need you anymore. You can go wherever the hell you want to. You're fired. So I don't know what's going to happen to Valkyrie. What's she, what is she going to do now? She doesn't even have a conductor. So who knows like what, how this is going to go. And uh, yeah, we'll probably meet Hell in the future as well. Hell and that guy. So we'll see. So let's see what this episode brings. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. This is episode number six of Tact OP Destiny. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. All right, so here's a countdown. Three, two, one, go. Oh my God, yeah. Abandoned completely in a way. Oh my god. All right. Groceries? There's no people here. What? No. Um. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Damn. She's yet yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> Chat skill. Oh wow. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Damn. <laughs> okay so we can see how she's changing as i said like uh what was that the first episode the first episode and the second episode even though the first episode it was destiny while the second episode it was Cosette, i was barely able to like you know find the difference between them like i it, for me it felt as if the, both of them were the same but then in the third episode, we actually realized that the first episode Cosette we see is actually Destiny. And the second episode Cosette is Cosette. So, 
that means she'll improve in such a way that it'll basically they Cosette and Destiny will be indistinguishable. The personality will become become so similar to each other. All right, rooster. <laughs> okay. Nah, there's another one. <laughs> yeah, how, like, this place is completely abandoned. Like, how does he even... Oh, there are people. Oh, no. Um, okay. Just give him a whack. And <laughs> He'll be fine. Oh, no. Never mind. Oh. Oh my god. Oh no, I can see where this is going to go. Oh my god. No milk. There you go, I knew this is going to happen. <laughs> okay. What happened to everyone? Like Whoa! My god, this place is breaking apart. Um, don't hammer your hand in. No! Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Tom. Wow, so okay, this is what's going to happen this episode. <laughs> no, that's yeah, that's a cat. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Oh, okay, this is a flashback. Ah, he's having a dream, a nightmare. Oh yeah, Saga. That's Saga, isn't it? Or maybe not. Don't get lost, as they said, you know? <laughs> oh. Okay. 
Yeah, this place is kind of abandoned, like barely any people. Cafe? Where did that guy go? Oh! Piano! Or maybe not. Oh, it's a recording. Okay, so this is like a enclosed space, so they can play music, you know, because it won't go out. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Yeah, they're playing music. Oh, and that, okay. Wait, what? Oh, that's why? No, oh, okay. Damn, this guy is very passionate. <laughs> well hmm hmm well <laughs> oh yep will he will they believe him I oh they did believe him What? What's she talking about? Oh, the cat, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Oh, maybe she, she reminds her of someone. Yeah, she reminds her of someone. Oh my god. Oh boy. Probably some kind of, like, you know, uh, mental. Yeah, maybe she had a daughter like this. Oh my god, yeah. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, the the most probably her daughter. Yeah, there you go.
she won't listen she'll just block that out you know because there you go it's like a mental affliction like after oh boy because <laughs> that could be a good food reviewer oh that's maria kind of looks like her in a way oh maybe maybe the dad is okay the dad is probably okay oh my god they had a piano okay okay yeah not surprising because they're so in love with music oh Hmm. No, there he is. Rooster? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, true. Who knows what will what can happen in the future? No. <laughs> Everyone's scared. Everything's soundproof. I think that's why. Okay, that the the dad knows. Yeah, the the dad is okay. Oh, I wonder why everyone left. Like, oh, oh, okay, okay. Also, not it's not that everyone left. Everyone left and they died. Or probably they never came back. Oh.
<laughs> it's not registered. Mm. Wow. Like, like seeing Destiny, yeah, seeing that it can even move D Destiny's heart as well, that really shows that. <sighs> yeah, he's fine. <laughs> he's plenty much hydrated. What? How was he? She, wow, she heard that. Wow. Nice. There you go. Hmm. All right, that was nice. Oh, wait, what? She brought that with her? My God. <laughs> She's scooping it. <laughs> oh, what's that? Wait, what? What was that? Is it Sagan? Shindla. Oh, no, oh, that guy. Shindla is that guy. What is happening? Wait, all this time I had the info like I had the impression that Sagan was a good guy, but now I'm not so sure. Like it seems like like he has like a goal which probably is not something which is as good as I at least thought it was. I don't know, I might it might be a 
I don't know, I might be just thinking too much into it, but it seems as if I don't know, like we'll see, we'll see, like yeah like it seems he's genuinely happy seeing, like you know, hearing that um uh, uh, Kenji Asanya's son is alive and that he awakened as a conductor he's genuinely happy but his happiness is it, it does not seem his happiness is because he's he's happy because he's alive it's not that it's just that he's happy that he's alive and he's a conductor and he can probably use him for something because as he said like he can join us now like it's probably that he has some kind of a plan regarding Takht. That's why she, he's happy that Takht is alive. That's it. All right, this episode, there was a nice, you know, little break we had in the, like, you know, in the middle of our journey. Um, we meet these people here in, in this town where there's no young people left now like i was kind of wondering like why is there no young people left now i think it's probably that as they explained it's probably that they the young people went away from here and then you know like this place was saved that's why all the old people all the adults are well and good alive here while all the young people who went somewhere else probably died because of the d2 now it kind of makes me think like like so there's like no young people here like what the how can that even happen like no children no one or maybe there are like we basically saw a little portion of the the town maybe there are the young people like you know and children you know like some place in this town somewhere who and we basically did not see them here in this episode but the way they were talking, they were saying that, oh, it's been a long while we've seen any young people. It makes me feel as if like there are literally no young person here. All are just adults or, you know, like uh, old people. So like, how is that even possible? Like no young people, like did everyone go away? Like did them like mom and dad and everyone like, you know, took their children and went away from here? Kind of weird. And no, it's probably maybe, maybe I think maybe this was like uh, you know one of those um, what do you call them uh, like one of those uh, little towns where there were no opportunities you know that's why maybe like all the young people they found better opportunities outside this place that's why they you know like all the young people took their children and left this place for going maybe in the maybe in some city or somewhere where they'll get better opportunities, better, uh, like, you know, facilities and everything. And this was like a backwater place, a backwater town or something. That's why all the young people left and the old people were just staying here. And, you know, like this place was all, all okay. The D2 did not attack, but all the other places that D2 attacked and all of them got killed. And that's why like, it's empty now, like no young people here. It's probably something like that, who knows? But yeah. Like, like all of them are not old. Like we saw that guy, the the guy who was uh, a part of Asahina's, like you know, who played with Asahina Kenji once. That guy. So we saw him. Like he, he was quite young. Like, like not, like not uh, twenty or thirty years old. Not like that. Probably somewhere around forty, forty-five. He was. That's that's still quite young. So yeah, it's the range of the age, it's probably like that, like from 40 upwards, something like that. Yeah, there are probably no people here who are uh, younger than 40 years old in this place. And since all of them probably died or they never came back, this place has been devoid of young people. But yeah, anyways, and that's why like, you know, like there's no one outside, like the, the place is just like, it seems as if it's an abandoned place. and the the place is huge but the streets are empty and everything is empty like there's no one kind of weird in a way but yeah anyways okay so yeah we here get in uh, like you know take a little break here tucked is in the <laughs> in the car and 
Anna and Cosette goes, uh, Destiny goes to buy some um, groceries and they get roped into one thing after the other. Like, <laughs> first the old man who had the broken back <laughs> and then uh, the lady with the, you know, the, like, the, the floor, the floorboard goes down and Anna starts repairing it and then the cat <laughs> then the other lady who is missing her daughter you know like one after the other and that was what was happening um uh you know in Cosette's side uh, in destiny and their side while um in that side it is something completely different now here it is like there we see here we see a little flashback or maybe like a light small nightmare where we see like the d2 is attacking and someone kills the d2 and at that time i wasn't able to properly recognize who those people were who saved him now i'm seeing it again and i can recognize both of them it's uh hell and the other girl um the girl with the hat uh, who we saw later on those two those two actually saved talked at that time and okay all right so uh, Okay, that's why probably like you know like hell hell probably hell probably was able to recognize Tuck before. Yeah, most probably because we see these two are actually coming and helping Tuck here, so maybe they had still have memories of her him because I, I, I like we see like in the end the white hatted girl, you know she has um you know memories of Tuck. I think that's why he she said that oh like Kenji Asanya's son is alive. But anyways, yeah, that happens and that comes across a bar, an underground bar where there's music playing. And I guess this is like soundproofed completely, you know, like it's like in an underground place. I doubt any D2 will come here. You know, for like because of the music. And no one is able to properly play piano here and the the bartender was so <laughs> excited like you know like he's like oh kenji asahina he's the best and yeah and okay the thing that um now here's one thing that i really did not realize um, before but it's kind of surprised me here where is that portion that when tak says that Okay, where is that? Okay, here it is. Um, when uh, Tuck asks that, so why are you guys uh, listening to Asahina Kenji? I thought everyone loathes Kenji. Now, here's the thing. I really did not realize this was the actual case here. Like, I did not know that, I, I did not think about that everyone actually does loathe Kenji. Like why like because of that tragedy like that that was not on him like i guess he was a conductor but like is that the reason why actually people blames him like what anyways um okay he says that yeah like especially the ones who love music uh, uh the bartender says do you mean boston's tragedy to those who love music he caused everyone great trouble and we all have to enjoy the music surreptitiously. Okay, I think we probably don't have the full picture here. Like, according to, um, I think they'll probably explain us more later on. Uh, according to Tuck, he says that because of his dad, um, <clears throat> like, you know, the tragedy happened and everyone now has to listen to music hiding, you know, in hiding. Surreptitiously, what does that even mean? Just a sec. Surreptitiously. Surreptitious. Surreptitious. Sick secret. There you go. Yeah. So uh, because of that, everyone has to listen to music secretly. Like, so this probably implies that because of that, like because of Asahina Kenji and that Boston tragedy, after that, like this whole thing happened, this whole, like, you know, D2 thing and not D2 thing, but this whole, like, you know, like, everyone, like, band music and all the stuff happened. Probably because of that. Like, 
I really had no idea. Like because of that, everyone did not like him. Like what a weird type of a like you know reason to blame someone. Like he's he's such a great musician, and like I understand because of him, probably the music lovers did not had to like you know listen to music secretly. But that does not mean you have to hate him. Like why? Like this sure would have happened sooner or later. Like if. Asuna Kenji was not the reason maybe someone else would have been who loved music like it, it would have happened sooner or later so why blame the musician for something like this I don't know like like especially people who love music like I'm sure people who love music would actually sympathize with him wouldn't they but here it seems as if they're blaming him like I don't know anyways I'm, I'm or maybe maybe there's something we still don't know maybe there's more to the picture that we don't know uh, okay anyways uh, like i'll stop talking about it we'll we'll get to know in the future hopefully the the whole thing that happened the whole story <clears throat> but yeah yeah anyways okay so that was that and <clears throat> okay and then he says that yeah i'm <laughs> i'm his son and the <laughs> and the people were like what <laughs> oh my god yeah and interesting that they actually believed him like i thought they were probably not going to believe him at the beginning but it, it seems as if they believed him from the get-go like that's interesting like but you know what like i guess like who would have even come and try like you know and say that yeah i'm asking akenji's son like who would even do that so yeah anyway that's why probably they believed him so easily but yeah, that was that. And then we come to the next part where Cosette, uh, uh, Destiny and Anna meets the old, uh, not old lady, but the lady, the middle aged lady. And we can see that, you know, like she, she has this kind of a mental um, problem where she is thinking that, yeah, my uh, daughter is alive and I'm all well and good. And, you know, like it kind of makes me realize that she has been waiting there for quite a while, I guess, you know, like probably every day she comes out, sits down and just waits for her daughter, sad thinking about it. And since this place has no young people, she never meets someone who looks like the daughter. And in her head, it's as if like her daughter is well and OK. It's just that they're not here. They're somewhere else. It's something like that is in her head. And she always waits for the daughter to come back. And today, like, Anna and um, Destiny comes here and like they're the only young people and obviously like Destiny or Cosette she looks very different from the daughter that I think that was Maria was her name and she looks very different from Maria but Anna looked a lot similar to her a lot kind of a lot closer to her appearance that's why she was like oh like uh maria you came back like looking at looking at anna because of her mental you know like uh disorder and that coupled with seeing a young person after so long and that also like you know in his in her head she know she thinks that her daughter is alive it's just that she's somewhere else and that's why she kind of you know like latched onto anna and brought them in started giving them food and it's very like you know like it's kind of sad to see how like you know like it's it's as if she's blocking everything whenever like you know anna was trying to say that like uh madam i'm actually not your daughter i'm someone else whenever she says something like that she just smiles and it's, it's completely blocked from her like she doesn't even react to that and like, you know, when Cosette says something else, she's reacting to that. When Anna says something else, she's reacting to that. But as soon as that thing comes where it's like, like, you know, the, where they say that, oh, I'm not your daughter, she blocks that off. And it's like, I, I think it's like a, a, what do you call it? Mm, uh, not survival mechanism, but something similar to that, you know? Like, it's like a mechanism, it's like an unconscious mechanism that happens where she tries to protect herself, you know, from, like, you know, realizing that probably her daughter is dead. And it, like, you know, it's, it, it protects herself from that. Because as soon as she realizes that her daughter is dead, she'll break down completely and it'll be over for her. So her, most probably her brain 
automatically shields her from everything uh, related to her daughter and like you know listening to that uh, like information about her daughter some stuff like that it blocks it off completely so that she's okay she's able to keep her mental balance and it's like a, like you know as i said it's kind of like a survival mechanism that suddenly like you know um, gets into action as soon as someone tells that your daughter is dead or i am not your daughter or something like that it it starts uh, working and she blocks everything out like in a way it's, it's like you know it's such a sad uh, what do you call it circumstance because the dad knows everything what's happening the dad has to see her wife his wife like this and like you know like sitting down outside each and every day waiting for someone who'll never come and the dad is fine the dad is mentally fine so he has to you know like see all of that and she can't he can't even do anything about it and the mom just like you know sits down waiting for someone who will never come back <sighs> all right okay that was that and okay and then uh, like you know we see like uh, anna and um, cosette go to the the bar and you know like <laughs> cosette is like i love um tuck's uh, music the most and like i don't know that like, this episode kind of makes me feel as if her actual reason for like you know like what does she say she says that uh, my uh, objective is destroying all d2s like that's what she's been saying from the beginning and that's like her main goal and she's like so passionate about that and now that i think about it she she herself kind of explains it in this episode like why is that her goal it's because she wants Tuck to play freely. Like basically her goal is related to Tuck. It's not that she, that she wants to kill D2 because of some random reason. It's not that. It's that it's probably that she thinks that yeah like after like if I destroy all the D2 Tuck will be able to play music freely. And I'll be able to listen to his music. Uh, the music that she loves so much. And yeah that's like her way and like you know like that's how she came into the conclusion that yeah i should destroy all d2 like wow like i did not even realize that like that's probably what her actual um you know thought process is the reason behind her wanting to destroy all the d2 is probably that it's probably tuck and uh, yeah and we can see how she's changing you know she's she's she can so easily like express her feelings now even though it's kind of you know clunky <laughs> she's not properly able to express her feelings if she kind of like you know expresses everything in a broken manner but she's she's doing very well like comparing her to the first day that we saw her you know so yeah like we can see how she's changing and she'll she, it'll probably be like soon very soon that we'll not be able to actually distinguish her personality from cosette's like she'll be like she'll be like a more sassier cosette that that will probably become her personality like she'll become like cosette but she'll have that sass going on <laughs> oh my god yeah so okay that was that and okay one thing i was not able to understand what was that oh i think that was music scores wasn't that yeah like the the guy you know the guy uh, gave him uh, tucked something after the music after she he played the piano i think that's music scores most probably i'm not sure what that is we can see some sheets of paper and those are most probably music scores or something like that so yeah it's probably that because you know after that he was kind of doing stuff like this and <laughs> on the window yeah it's probably music scores piano piano related to the piano all right okay and then we get to the um next part where we see sagan and the other girl and he 
like you know sagan says that okay like uh, uh, information from hell um kenji's daughter uh, son is alive and Saga seems pretty very happy and I am I'm, I'm not really liking the way he is you know happy he he's saying something like oh he'll join us you know like he he'll definitely join us and I, we are still not so sure about their actual goal what they want if it's a good goal then it's it's fine then it's, I'm sure it's fine but I feel like it's something else com completely there's something that at least we don't anticipate so but he seems genuinely happy so that's good I guess like you know so yeah and another thing i kind of remember is uh we saw sagan in in the uh in, uh when the whole tragedy happened with uh Gazette, you know uh, in that in that what, what was that uh the symphonia festival or whatever <clears throat> and that day he also came and he also listened to um tax piano playing i thought he actually knew that Takt was his his son at that time but now that i'm seeing this episode i realized that no he did not know that it was kenji's son it is today that he got to know that it, that is kenji's son at that like you know that day when he was listening to the piano playing he 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 was he, he was unaware of the, of the fact that the guy who's playing the piano is kenji's son so it was just that he he like you know you kind of saw him bobbing his head to the piano playing in a way i think so it was just that so nothing else so I, I had like a wrong impression all the time yeah so we'll see okay we still don't know what his plan is hopefully it's something not too bad otherwise yeah we'll have to like you know like probably Sagan and Schneider was his name wasn't it the other guy or something like that Schindler <laughs> Schneider <laughs> Schindler Schindler and or, or as Schindler and Sagan will probably become antagonists or something like yeah that'll be a problem because like d2s are already a bigger of a problem so now if the humans also starts to become the enemies that'll be a bigger problem so yeah we'll see that was a good episode so that's it so that was my reaction to tuck op destiny episode number six if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to this channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll definitely check them out so that's it guys and thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next week with another episode of tucked op destiny until then goodbye and have a nice day